I call the meeting to order. May I have a roll call, please? Eddie Gunther, Precinct 2. Joe Flores, Precinct 3. Ellie Torres, Precinct 4. Richard Cortez, County Judge, the Constitution Quorum. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Today we are honored to have Mr. Alberto Rios, an inventory control specialist in our purchasing department, joining us to lead the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Rios is a veteran, as is customary for us to start every meeting with a veteran saying the Pledge of Allegiance. He was served in the U.S. Navy, who served from June 1979 through November 1991, and we, of course we thank him for his service. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you can remain standing, please. Almighty God, we come together today for the good of the citizens of Hidalgo County. Give us your wisdom as we make decisions that will affect them today and in the years to come. Help us to work well together, recognizing that each of us are here because we want what is best for Hidalgo County. We ask for your blessing and your guidance. Amen. 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 I would like to move item 17A and 17B in that order for, for discussion. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Julia Sullivan, Public Affairs. Um, for Precinct 3 Commissioner, Joe M. Flores, if I could have the family of Corporal um, Espiricueta join me, please, along with Precinct uh, 3 staff and, and the supporters who are here for this resolution. I will, I will read the resolution as we're getting settled. I, item 17A under Precinct 3 Commissioner Joe M. Flores is a resolution in honor of Corporal Jose Luis Speedy Espiricueta Jr. Whereas Corporal Jose Luis Speedy Espiricueta Jr. made the ultimate sacrifice while performing his duty to serve and protect, protect on Thursday, June 20th, 2019. And whereas a true hero, Corporal Espiricueta, was the first mission police officer killed in the line of duty since 1978. An 18-year law enforcement veteran, mostly serving with the Mission Police Department, Corporal Espiricueta has a long history of service, including rescuing an elderly man from a burning house, saving two young children from a locked car, apprehending multiple armed suspects in a home invasion, and for televised appearances on A&E, Live PD, and National Geographic Border Wars. And whereas the City of Mission, the Mission Police Department, and Corporal Esperacueta's family received an outpouring of support from the community, as well as law enforcement officers around the country, support that grew into the hundreds who flew in to pay their respects, and whereas Corporal Espiricueta is survived by his lifelong high school sweetheart and wife of 21 years, Roberta Bobby de Leon Espiricueta, and their two children, Brianna, 19, and Joaquin, 13. His parents, Santi McCallum Gonzalez, Joe Gonzalez, and Jose Luis Espiricueta, Sr., and two brothers, Isaac and Danny Gonzalez. And whereas Mission Police Chief Robert Dominguez said, when God created him, he blended in the right mixture of humility and compassion. These qualities molded him into a true public servant and assisted him in becoming the great leader that he was for our department. And whereas Hidalgo County will forever be grateful for his service and sacrifice, Corporal Esperacuita's dedication to public service will stand as a shining example to all. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court does hereby honor Corporal Jose Luis Espiricueta, Jr. for his City of Mission police service, his sacrifice, and his life. His time here in Hidalgo County will always be remembered. And this, is, this was approved by Commissioner's Court on July 1st, 2019. Second. 
Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Representing the family to say a few words is Mission Chief of Police Robert Dominguez. Judge Cortez, Commissioners, uh, on behalf of the Spiriqueta family and our family at the Mission Police Department and the City of Mission, I'd like to thank you for this recognition today. Um, as you know, the Spiriqueta family and our family at the Mission Police Department suffered a tragic loss back on, on the 20th day of June. Um, it's been hard to deal with this, um, both from the family's perspective and our perspective at the Mission Police Department. But I can tell you, uh, your support and prayers, not only from the County of Hidalgo, but throughout the state of Texas and throughout the country, has been tremendous in helping us start the healing process. Um, there's difficult days to come, but uh, we'll, we'll persevere in order to take care of this beautiful fam family that is here before you today. And again, thank you on behalf of the Speedy Cueta family uh, for recognizing Speedy uh, today with this proclamation. Thank you. And, and with a uh, presentation from Precinct 3 is Executive Assistant Sarah Vela. Good morning. Um, well, when we went into the service and everything, we found out that he was a Dallas Cowboy fan. So I have a cousin who plays for the Cowboys, so he sent them a canvas signed, and I wanted to present it to the family, and it's from um, Dallas Cowboy number 52, Connor Williams.
Good morning again, Judge and Commissioners. Just, just, just a moment. Okay, on a, on a happier note, so we have a resolution recognizing the City of Mission. Good morning again, Judge Commissioners. Item 17B under Precinct 3, Commissioner Joan Flores, is a resolution in honor of the 2019 um, of the City of Mission being named an All-America City for 2019. And if you could all join me up here, please. Whereas, since 1949, the National Civic League has annually recognized and celebrated the best in American civic innovation and with a prestigious All-America City Award. This year, the City of Mission, Texas, showed how a determined community can tackle tough issues and create real change. And whereas, a town at the southern tip of Texas, Mission has a little over 83,000 residents. 88% of whom are Latino. The town prioritizes civic engagement, partly through the establishment of an all-American inclusive committee, which oversees city efforts regarding inclusivity in decision-making. And some of the ways in which residents get involved in community affairs includes an annual wellness ride cycling event, stocking the city's food pantry, and Mission Possible, a foster care program that helps rescue animals and hosts, hosts them for adoption. And whereas on June 24, 2019, Mission was recognized as one of the 10 All-America City Award winners. The National Civic League presented this honor to recognize the City of Mission's work in inclusive, inclusive civic engagement to create stronger connections among residents, business, and government leaders. And whereas Mission brings its diverse populace together by offering a free tennis program to low-income residents and the visually impaired, economic empowerment projects including training grants and internships, and a food and service center for people living in poverty. And whereas the City of Mission is an example of excellence in Hidalgo County, receiving these, this prestigious honor brings positive news coverage and promotes the entire area. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court does hereby celebrate the City of Mission, Texas as an all-America city and commends the work of the elected officials, staff, and volunteers in promoting excellence presented this 16th day of July, 2019. Approval. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 opposed, motion carries. introduce everyone who's here and say a few words on behalf of the city is Councilwoman Jessica Ortega Ochoa. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, thank you, um, uh, County Judge and Commissioners. Um, we are from Precinct 3 and we are just so proud of bringing home this honor. Um, I challenge all of Precinct 3 to also um, uh, compete because I think wonderful things happen in our precinct. But in mission, everything and anything is possible. This could not be possible uh, without our uh, wonderful idea and vision of our mayor, Mayor uh, Armando Ocaña. Um, when he ran, he had a platform, and in his platform of 100 days, he wanted for us to be an all-American city. So our PR staff, along with our deputy city manager, Aida Lerma, applied for this honor, and we got chosen top 20. Um, and the work started right after that. Um, we have many wonderful programs in the city of Mission, um, including our food pantry director, Adela Ortega. And then we have Pilar Gonzalez, who, uh, if you all don't know, you need to run to the store immediately and pick up her dips because they are the most delicious <laughs> you'll ever find. Um, and then we you have our wonderful you staff. You didn't bring us any? Or? I know, we should have. <laughs> Next time, I promise. Um, then we also have with us our mission uh, possible. Um, we saw the need uh, to save all of our animals in our city, and so we have a wonderful board. Um, and so we have them representing us, Ms. Tina Lewis. She did a phenomenal job uh, expressing um, all the advocacy that she does for our animals. 
Um, let's see, who do we have? Ruby didn't come. Um, we couldn't have done it without our mascots. We have a dog mascot and then we have a grapefruit mascot because as you well know, Mission is a home of the grapefruit. And so, I mean, that just set us over the top. You know, during our presentation, we really didn't have all the props as everybody else did. Everybody, as, as, as we could all say, uh, spent a lot of money for their presentation. But you know, as one of our uh, delegations said it very, very well, um, we uh, went through a tragedy when we were over there and we just performed with our hearts. And I think that that showed through. Um, so we dedicate this honor to our fallen officer and friend, um, Corporal Speedy Espericueta. And with that being said, I'd like to turn over the mic uh, to our mayor to see if he has a few words, which, you know, he always does. So. <laughs> Judge, uh, commissioners, you know, audience, uh, thank you for the opportunity to come before you and thank you for the recognition that we're getting. Being uh, uh, in front of the Hidalgo County is a, it's a great honor, you know, but uh, I couldn't do it by myself. Obviously, this is a short team, you know, this is a short team of the City of Mission. The City of Mission is, is uh, united for one purpose and that's to help the community and integrate uh, all services for all inclusive uh, as far as this is the basic philosophy that I'm bringing in, that all, all facilities for the city of Mission will be equally inclusive to any and all of our citizens, visitors, friends, neighbors, and, and, and whoever wants to come and spend some money in Mission. <laughs> Without further ado, I want to thank this, pub this team publicly because I, uh, you know, I'm short on, on, on thanking people, you know, because there's a, a, as a mayors, we expect a lot of work, a lot of things to happen. And, you know, I'm sure that, uh, Mayor, ex-Mayor Cortez you know, understands where I'm coming from, you know, that there's expectations and standards that you set and you think that, that our staff is, is, uh, is required to do that, but it cannot, be, it cannot happen without their heart and without pitching into the vision and the mission of our, uh, of our city. And uh, exceptional, exceptional customer service is part of our mission and mission. And thank you very much, the, the team that's here and those that, are, that have not been here. Well, it's, it's a great accomplishment and one that requires leadership and, and, and support from the community. And I'm so, so proud of the City of Mission to really show, sh show off what the Rio Grande Valley can do together. And I'm glad for, for Commissioner Flotis to put it on his agenda to recognize this very high achievement. So thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Okay, next item on the agenda is your approval of the consent agenda. Does anybody want to pull any of those items out for separate discussion? Yes, Judge, I'd like to pull consent agenda item 8D, 12C, and 12U. Motion to approve the rest of the, the consent. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. No one opposed. Motion carries. Consent agenda item 8D, uh, all the appropriate paperwork will be, uh, will be provided and, and attached to purchasing and the uh, uh, auditor's office. Okay, may I have a motion and such a rule. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item 12C, consent agenda item 12C is just a correction. There was one number that was missing. So the invoice number should read 11327. Uh, yeah, 1127625. Uh, and the purchase order for invoices 5201-12 and 5201-13 should read 779419. Move for approval Second. with correction. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. No one opposed. Motion carried. And 12U, uh, the appropriate paperwork will be uh, on file, which is the, the insurance certificate. Yes, we did get the insurance certificate. What we're going to ask is that we be placed as the additional insurance. Right. Thank That's you. That's what Mr. Move for approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. No one opposed. Motion carries. Okay, I think that takes care of all the consent agenda items. Number 5A. Ms. Rosie. Good morning, Commissioners. Judge Rosalinda Cantu presenting for the District Attorney's Office. Item 5A, DA Domestic Violence Unit Grant Fund 1281. We're asking for approval to submit a DBU grant number 3596501 budget adjustment to the Office of the Governor. A rule. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? I vote aye. Motion carries. Thank you. May I proceed to say Yes, say? yes. Item 6A, Haida Task Force, pursuant to Article 3, Section 52A of the Texas Constitution, requesting Commissioner's Court approval for Haida to purchase promotional items to include personalized pens and pencils, personalized bracelets, lanyards, buttons, ribbons, stickers, folders, bookmarks, and markers, and notebooks for a period of July 16th, 2019 through uh, December 31st, 2019. Move for approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. No one opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Sheriff's Department, 7A. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Chief Herrera with the Sheriff's Office of Seattle County. Item 7A, A, uh, 2018 Operation Stone Garden 1284, authorization and approval to submit a budget amendment, FRAGO, and Price Act waiver in reference to Operation Stone Garden 2018. Approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. B, 1 through 3, Sheriff's Office Operation Stone Garden, fiscal year 2017, 1284, number 1, ratification of adjustment made. June 28, 2019, to request two-month extension for fiscal year 2017 Operation Stone Garden. Two, authorization uh, to request a grant adjustment for four-month extension for fiscal year 2017 Operation Stone Garden. And three, authorization for Judge Cortez to certify uh, adjustment on e-grants. Move for approval of 7B123. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. C, requesting approval to submit the attached credit application document required by HD Supply Construction and Industrial White Cap 
including authority for Hidalgo County Sheriff to execute document and two, requesting, uh, requesting approval to submit attached credit application document required by B Ben E. Keith Company, including authority for Hidalgo County Sheriff to execute document. Move for approval on 7C12. Second. Opposed in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carried. D, authorization and approval of interlocal agreement for 911 public safety answering point uh, services between the Lower Rio Grande Valley Development Council and Hidalgo County. Two, authorization for county judge as authorized official to sign two copies of the agreement. Move for approval on D12. Second. Second. Opposed in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. E, discussion, consideration, and approval to appoint Jacob Sloss, student at the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley, as an intern under the Hidalgo County, Hidalgo County Sheriff's Office Law Enforcement Internship Program for the period of September 2019 to December 2019. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. F, discussion, consideration, and approval to appoint Alyssa Rodriguez, university graduate, as an intern under Hidalgo County Sheriff's Office Law Enforcement Internship Program for a period of July 2019 to August 31st, 2019. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, sir. That's all I have, ma'am. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Morning, Judge Commissioner. Good morning. 8 uh, A, Constable Precinct 4, requesting authorization and approval to accept five ballistic vests as a donation from the Texas Department of Public Safety to be issued and worn by peace officers in our department for extra officer safety due to heightened officer shooting this year. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Hope you never need them. Commissioners, thank, thank you. Thank you. Judge Commissioners, if I may, under Executive Office, uh, there is no action under item 9A1. Under 9A2, 9A2 just a couple of uh, notations. Uh, we did have an issue with uh, one of our chillers at the courthouse last week. It was shut down uh, for an emergency uh, uh, repair. Uh, it was, uh, the issue was resolved uh, within the hour, uh, and so I wanted to make note of that in case, uh, uh, or just to put uh, on the record that there was an issue with one of our chillers. The second one is um, we have been having uh, maintenance uh, issues with respect to our generators. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there is uh, sludge has been settling at the bottom of the tanks with respect to the uh, fuel. Uh, and so we've uh, had, to, we're working through facilities management, but we've had to uh, do some, uh, uh, not our regular maintenance, but uh, um, I don't want to use emergency maintenance, but uh, we're addressing all of our generators. Uh, I do want to note that I do not believe that this is uh, Hidalgo County. This is just an issue in general with the fuel uh, that's out there. And so... Uh, the, the problem with the sludge settling at the bottom is they get into the filters and then the filters don't do their job. Then they get into the pumps and then the pumps uh, get uh, clogged up and then you'll have a failure at some point. So, but we are addressing that issue. Um, item B. Oh, and, and one other, th uh, one other. Uh, we do, uh, uh, we are scheduling through facilities management at the courthouse the repair of one of the elevator shafts. Uh, we are working with facilities to pick a time uh, and a date uh, this week uh, so as uh, to be as uh, little intrusive with the operations over there. Uh, that is the latest with respect to the elevators. Uh, item B, Judge Commissioners, uh, I'm asking approval to designate one alternate and three proxies to the Hidalgo County Rio Grande Valley Metropolitan Planning Organization Transportation Policy Committee. Judge Commissioners, I'll turn it over. Grant C. Uh, Grant B. B. Yes, sir. B. The alternates and the three proxies. So, so we had talked about uh, making David Fuentes the alternate. Do we take them one at a time? One, uh, yes. Uh, well, we can take them all uh, oh, okay. as, a, as an action item. And how many alternates or proxies? Three do we proxies. Have? So I was thinking, and we can talk about this, but uh, Torres, uh, Commissioner Torres, first proxy, then Mando Garza from my staff, and the mayor, Mayor Suarez, 
unless people want to make some changes. I move approval. Second. Uh, what what does that mean? The three proxies uh, to the Hidalgo County we're going to buy the Metropolitan. What, what does that mean? So like, if I can't attend, I'll first call Fuentes, and if Fuentes can't attend, then we go down the line. Yeah. Okay, so it just goes down the line. Right. Right. We have a motion and a second. Mm. All those in favor, say aye. 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 No one opposed. Motion carries. Item C, Judge Commissioners, is approval to designate members to the Hidalgo, uh, Hidalgo County Rio Grande Valley Metropolitan Organization would be the Technical Advisory Committee. Commissioner, Judge? We had, right now we have Jacinto Garza, and I uh, recommend that we keep Jacinto Garza and his team. Motion approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 No one opposed. Motion carries. Judge Commissioners, if I could just interject. Uh, the only thing is we have some forms that need to be filled out. Monica has them right now. If we can get those today because we have a meeting on Thursday, if we can get those uh, uh, documents signed today, uh, they're conflict of interest forms. Uh, if we can get those today, uh, that will uh, prepare us for Thursday's meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Judge Commissioners, item 9D is discussion consideration and action updating principle for the IRS TIN taxpayer identification number matching program as follows uh, principle from Richard F. Cortez our county judge to Valde Guerra myself the executive officer there has been previous action taken by commissioner's court uh, but I'm asking for an update with respect to the principal action order. yes sir for rule second all those in favor say aye. 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 Everyone opposed? Motion carried. And just as a reminder uh, to everyone, uh, the other two individuals, uh, part of this program are Mr. Cruz, our uh, budget officer, and Ms. Linda Fong, which is the uh, uh, chief or first chief auditor to the county auditor. And judge on item E. We're going to defer. If we can take no action at this time, right. we'll come back to it. Right. Item F, I'm going to ask... Um, Yeah, Mr. Ramirez. Uh, item F is presentation, discussion, and necessary action to approve the stormwater management program submittal to meet TCEQ requirements under general permit for stormwater discharge for phase two small municipal separate storm sewer systems. There's three action items. That's the first one. So moved. Second. For, for all three? No, uh, well. Just, just for the first one. Right. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 opposed? Motion carried. Item two is authorization for the county judge to sign the necessary documentation. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 opposed? Motion carried. And the last action item would be the $400 payment of permit fee and the authorization of such. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, sir. Item G, I'm asking the court approval to accept settlement check from Pronto, uh, Pronto General Agency in the amount of $187.50. This will settle damages to uh, one of our county stop signs. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Everyone opposed? Motion carries. Ms. Ramirez from WIC. Good morning, Judge and Commissioners. Clarissa Ramirez with the Dogwood County WIC program. Here to present on item 10A, requesting approval to host an event for World Breastfeeding Month on Friday, August 2nd, from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. at the Lactation Center RGV. And so, here, with, here with me today is Berlin Carrizales, and she'd like to talk a little bit about the event. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Judge Good morning. and Commissioners, and to the audience also. So uh, I'm a registered nurse and a lactation consultant. I'm the director of the Lactation Center, where we provide free breastfeeding assistance for the constituents of Hidalgo County and the Rio Grande Valley. And so we all know through a lot of scientific evidence, through a lot of research, that breastfeeding has a dramatic impact on mom and baby's health. And so we're providing um, support for the mothers here in the valley. So what we'd like to do is have um, a celebration of breastfeeding at our, our center where we're um, collaborating with the early intervention um, program, the ECI program. So we're providing education to the mothers about breastfeeding, pace bottle feeding, returning back to work, giving breast milk in the bottle. Um, also how to get the extra 500 calories that they're re required daily for breastfeeding. And so showing them um, healthy ways of getting these 500 calories extra. So we'd like, uh, we're seeking approval for this event. So moved. Second. 
Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Cecilia. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Carlos Aguero from the Department of Human Resources. Item 11, 11A. First is we're requesting a waiver of the budget amendment policy, personnel related amendments, if applicable, for personnel items listed. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 One opposed? Motion carries. Item 11B for the uh, Texas Agri Live Extension Department. Approval of the following personnel actions effective next full pay period, 7 22 2019. Uh, uh, Mr. Gutter is asking approval to delete two, two clerk one positions, which are grade one, and to create one uh, administrative three positions, slot number 18 at a grade eight. The overall cost for the one position is less than the cost of the two positions, and those positions are vacant. So moved. Thank Second. You. All those in favor say aye. 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 One opposed? Motion carries. Item 11C for Justice of the Peace, place three, place two. They're asking approval of the first following personnel actions. Uh, the, the judge wants to delete uh, slot 004, assistant court coordinator, a grade nine position, and in lieu of that, create a clerk four position, which is at a lower grade, a grade seven position. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 One opposed? Motion carries. Item D, 11D for the uh, district attorney. Uh, for several programs, uh, they're asking, uh, actually these are uh, two attorneys that are paid from different programs, but they're asking approval to award. These are new employees that are eligible for discretionary steps uh, based on their experience under the uh, classification plan. They're asking approval to award discretionary step three to employee hired on slot number uh, 0033, assistant district attorney two, after approval of HR criteria certification in accordance with section 803 of the classification and compensation plan and upon uh, commission's court approval. And the second item is approval to award discretionary step two to employee hired under slide number 0156, uh, assistant district attorney four after approval of the HR criteria in accordance with the plan. Mm -hmm. And the, the funding will be from the budget office, from the savings when people leave the uh, higher paid steps uh, we have an account that where we save those savings, and that's where these steps will be taken. Move for parole on D1 and 2. Second. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Everyone opposed? Motion carries. Item E, this is uh, Precinct 1 Parks and Sanitation. Uh, the precinct is asking uh, approval to create two slots, two positions, 0031 maintenance 2 uh, and 0053, the one is in parks and one is in sanitation, maintenance two. These positions will be funded through the savings that, that are expected. Uh, currently, the, uh, the precinct uh, contracts with Valley Metro, and they have security guards at, at two parks and at the yard uh, that provide security at night uh, at a cost of roughly $80,000. And the precinct is proposing to hire these two positions. They will be assigned at night, they're gonna work the night shift, and besides providing the security, there will be assigned duties re related to uh, maintenance of the equipment, washing the vehicles, and things like that. So they'll be doing some work in addition to, to providing the security at night. For approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 No one opposed, motion carries. Thank you, sir, that's all I have. Thank you. Urban County. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. We have one item on the agenda today, and uh, it is 12A. This is the approval of a land acquisition easement number two for the 2015 flood grant, trench and drain phase two and three, general land office contract 18-271-000-A923. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Morning, Judge. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Eddie Olivares, Hidalgo County Health. Okay, Please guys. continue. I have one item, sir, requesting approval to accept the Public Health Zika Response Grant contract number 537 Zero zero one, amendment number three. The purpose of the amendment is for the continuing support of public health Zika response activities and re and to reflect 
a revised uh, termination date of July 31st, 2020. So moved. Well, you want to go to two? Oh, go and number two is requested approval of the county judge to east send the grant contracts. This, contra this grant serves for the remaining $15,000 on the grant. Uh, we're going to use that to develop some temporary positions to continue our trapping efforts through at least through December, sir. Motion to approve one and two. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. TJ Adelanda for the record. Uh, the following subdivisions are for final approval. We have Vista Ridge Acres number six in Precinct 1. It's a 66 lot subdivision in the flood zone X. Uh, drainage is a storm sewer system which will discharge into an existing drain ditch. It's in the rural area of the county. Water is provided by North Alamo and 66 septic tanks have been installed. We're recommending approval. So moved. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Next item is Blanquita Estates in Precinct 1, a 34 lot subdivision in a flood, flood zone X shaded. Uh, there is a storm system and intention by widening the existing drain ditch. It was approved by the city of Donna. Uh, 34 septic systems have been installed in five street lights as well. We're recommending approval. So moved. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Yvonne Ramon with elections with one item, 15A. On July 18th, 2018, the U.S. Elections Commission released $23,254,604 of the last of the HAVA funding, the Help America Vote Act. And one of their three objectives, uh, one of their three primary objectives was to provide security services for all Texas elections administrators uh, be it county clerks, tax, tax assessors, or elections administrators in all of the 254 counties throughout this state. And so they went ahead and uh, made a contract with the Texas Department of Information Resources, or DIR, and thus our uh, item today. Uh, this interlocal agreement has been approved by legal, and so I present to you discussion, consideration, and approval to enter into an interlocal agreement between the Texas Department of Information Resources, or DIR, and Hidalgo County relating to the use and participation of the DIR Shared Services Program. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Morning, Judge, Commissioners, Precinct 1. Requesting approval of an interlocal cooperation agreement between the South Texas Independent School District and the County of Hidalgo for the student transportation staging area for the 2019-2020 school year ag agreement expiring August 31, 2020. Rule. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. Item 17A and B have already been taken care of. 17C. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, Commissioners. Armin Garza, Precinct 3. Item C, requesting approval of an interlocal cooperation agreement between Hidalgo County and the City of Granjeno to assist one another in multiple projects. Approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item number two, in accordance with section 791.014 of the Texas Government Code, Hidalgo County through Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court has been advised of a proposed project. The county and city desires to assist each other in projects being defined by mutual agreement to interlocal cooperation agreement, agreeing to assist each other with equipment, materials, and manpower. Approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Morning, Judge Commissioner, Sergio Cruz, Department of Budget and Management. Uh, item 18A uh, is a quick presentation of the 2020 budget, uh, budget process status. Uh, basically, we closed the uh, budget application program uh, for budget requests uh, last month. Um, the total operating that was requested was $75.6 million uh, for operating expenditures. Uh, that's $8.7 million more than was uh, approved uh, for, the, for this year's uh, budget. Uh, however, uh, uh, that doesn't uh, include that there were 18 departments that did not submit a budget request for, for this 2020 budget process. If we were to have those uh, 18 departments at the, the current budget level, uh, the total request would then uh, jump to 10.2, uh, actually to, uh, yeah, would jump up uh, $10.2 million more than it was last year. 
Uh, we will be uh, analyzing all the department's requests and submitting our recommended uh, budget for each department to each of the departments uh, within the coming week. Uh, <clears throat> and then we do have on, on the packet that we gave you on page two and three, we do have a proposed budget workshop calendar. Uh, we would like to have uh, budget workshops on the weeks that we don't have the commissioner's court uh, to be able to, to allow for a, a more lengthy discussion on the budgets. Uh, so basically our first budget workshop would be next week on the 23rd uh, at the same time uh, at 9.30 uh, if, if possible. Uh, and then any new information that we have, uh, we'll post it online and uh, share it via the, the bulletins that we've been submitting uh, uh, normally to all the departments. Uh, there's no uh, action required for this. Um, just a quick status update on that. Uh, if I could, uh, if I could skip on item 18 B and C, while Ms. Walpa uh, makes her way, uh, uh, item 18 D, a uh, discussion consideration and approval of July 2019, LRGVDC road to recycling participa participation acknowledgement, uh, and I have Mr. Ray Salazar to give a few words on that. Good morning, Judge Commissioner. Thank you very much. I'm here today this morning with Ron Garza from the Lower Rio Grande Valley Development Council. And today we're seeking approval of the acknowledgement form to partner with the Development Council and conduct our fourth Road to Recycle Entire Collection event. This has been a tremendous success as a model of true partnership with this uh, local uh, government. And uh, through their efforts, they are continuing to successfully petition TCEQ for additional grant funding, not only so that we can continue this effort, but so that we can transform our model of how we dispose of our tires. Uh, Mr. Garza recently uh, explained a different model and a different concept that we're hoping that takes way here in Hidalgo County in our region. And we hope with your approval and acknowledgement we begin to pave that way. Um, if, uh, if it pleases the court, I'd like for him to say a few words. Sure. Judge Commissioners, uh, again, thank you for the support. This is something we've been doing for about three years. Uh, it, it's really supported by Council of Governments. It's really a nice partnership. Uh, LRGVDC pays for the disposal, and the counties just do the transportation to the facility. So it's a, it's a great partnership. This coming event, like others, we have over 35 sites all across the valley that citizens can take four tires uh, for free. Uh, we know how much of an epidemic issue illegally dumped tires are for so many, so many cases. So, uh, but uh, like, like Ray said, we're taking it kind of to the next step. We just visited the state of Arkansas, and they're doing some pretty innovative things with some tire-derived aggregate and some things that I think we can do here and take it to true recycling. So, uh, as always, I appreciate the support. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roger. And uh, Chief Sardano just wanted to, again, echo the sentiment of the effort that we're continuing to have, uh, especially during this uh, season that we're in. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. I sit on the Solid Waste Board with the LRGVDC, and we've been pioneers with Mr. Garza in this recycling effort. This is our third or fourth event, our fourth event that we've been working on, and it's been very successful, and we would like to continue this effort to remove these tires off these public roadways. Thank you. Thank you. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you very much, Ray and, Ray and Ricardo. So we can move uh, back to item 18B, is a presentation of the Hidalgo County 2019 Employee Health Fair results. And Ms. Diana Walpa will be here to make the presentation. Good morning, County Commissioners, Judge, Ms. Angelica, and Ms. Julia are going to help me pass out an infographic that we have made regarding the health fair. So I'm just going to wait on They're going to do the distributed. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the basic information. In the recent event that we hosted on June 19 of the present year, we had a total of 623 registrations for the event. However, we have 521 employees who attended the health fair. This means that we had a 14% rate of the total um, employees that participated. We also, I think it's really important to note, as you're going to be seeing the infographic um, 
briefly. We had almost 400 employees who participated in the boot tracker activity. And this means that almost 400 students got their blood pressure and the glucose screening. And the paper that I'm uh, right now pointing out is the blue one and orange one. Mm -hmm. Also, if you turn over to the back, I actually created a table based on the department, so the health fair registration and, the, and attendees by department. And we can note in the graph to the top right hand that the top 25 departments were purchasing, budget, and management, uh, precinct two. We also had planning and the county judge, among other departments. I think it's really important to know that your support is important in this wellness initiative and that we need to continue improving our in from our part, our marketing, and also um, the different events. I also think in the graph that is noted in the front, we can see that most of the people who attended the health fair were from the Edinburgh location, which is really important because that will help us see, okay, we really need to expand to different areas and to target different populations from different departments. If you have any questions, please let me know. I think this is great because this kind of gives you going forward when we're able to see results, this may tell us, this may give us a baseline, right? And that if you see purchasing and budget and management at the top of the list in successes, I mean, part of this could be that they attended the health fair. I think the health fair was done very well. I think you did a really great job. We had the most people we've ever had. We also did something different in that we made sure we guided our employees to the right booth. What I had seen in the past years is the employees would get there and they would kind of just do things on their own and just go around and not necessarily uh, at, in a targeted uh, booth, right? In, in this case, we would told them, okay, over here, this is for vision. Over here, this is for diabetes and so forth. And we organized them accordingly. So I think it was a great health fair. Like I said, I think this gives, gives us a, a basis to see who was involved and hopefully we can get, you know, 80% to 100% of our employees involved. 14% sounds like a low number, but compared to years mm -hmm. past, it's a tremendous number. Yes, and I think it's a great start, as you mentioned, Commissioner. Uh, this will help us to see how have we improved, and this is our baseline. So thank you all for your support. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dan. Uh, item 18C, a presentation discussion of the Hidalgo County Employee Wellness Challenges. Again, Ms. Yanova. Thank you, Sergio. Now, the following two flyers that have been passed, uh, we're going to have different challenges and events regarding the wellness. And the first one, which is a very colorful one, is an internal challenge, and that's going to start on August 24th. I'm actually going to provide a copy to Ms. Monica because we have updated the, um, the date. On the starting challenge, we're going to have a kickoff event. Hopefully, we are coordinating to have a registered dietitian to give us a presentation on how to properly eat, portion size, and also we want to have fitness activities to continue promoting the, the wellness initiative. Additionally, we, are, uh, we have been invited to participate in a nationwide challenge, and this is in groups of five, so we will really encourage you to to participate and encourage your employees to participate. Thank you so much. This, this will be awesome and that we'll be able to have the, those new scales that we have that, that measure BMI, body, body mass exactly. index, so that people can have a starting point as to where they're at now and where they're, where they're gonna be if they, um, whether they diet, well, do wellness or do both, they'll be able to have a measure and uh, we'll be able to track changes. So this is, this is great that we're not just shooting out different programs that we're actually measuring these programs. And I think because of that, we're gonna be successful. And I think, like I said at the, at the coffee, if our department heads can, can, can lead us, right, and lead their employees to, to attempt this, to, to get involved with this, we can make our employees better for themselves, for us, and to bring down our healthcare costs, which is the main goal. Yes, definitely. And I would like just to add that I think it's also really important that we keep record of everything that we're doing. Absolutely. The number of employees that are coming from what department are they coming from, just so we can improve and hopefully get the whole county wide why to get involved in the wellness initiative. Thank you so much. Uh, back to item 18E, discussion, consideration, and approval to authorize the urban county 
to utilize the county funds, special revenue bank account as interim funding for payment of expenditures uh, for the grants listed on the agenda. And how much are we talking about? Sorry. Uh, it'll be roughly about uh, 500,000 of expenditures per month is what uh, the communication that I got from Mr. Uh, Frank Martinez. Uh, again, this will just be interim funding. Uh, as they get reimbursement, it should be reimbursed back into the account. Jake, that will vary based on the type of construction that we have ongoing. Uh, many times, as we're, we're about to start the drainage project for uh, Trenton, um, Trenton area, we need to make sure that we have funding available to be able to pay out the contractor and then get wait for reimbursement. Sure, sure. No, no, I, I understand. And have you had any bad experience in, in getting reimbursed? No. For any, for any, no, no, and sir. you haven't been challenged in the past or whatever. You, you've no, always sir. been remembered. Okay. okay. Is there a motion? So okay. moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Item 18F uh, one is approval of the advanced funding agreement between the local county and the Texas Department of Transportation for the Doolittle Road Replacement and Rehabilitation Project, CSJ 0921023873 and approval of order authorizing the county just to sign the AFA for said project. Motion for approval. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. And item 18F2 is approval to issue the check payable to the Texas Department of Transportation Trust Fund in the amount of $18,145. And this is for the county's estimated uh, cost of direct state cost for preliminary engineering and right of way associated with the Doolittle uh, Road Replacement Rehabilitation Project. Uh, with authority for the county treasurer to issue check after review, audit, and processing procedures are completed by the county auditor. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item 18G is requesting approval of certification of revenues by the county auditor in the amount of $36,000. That's 36. a correction. 36000 That's a correction from the amount listed on the agenda. Okay. Uh, and these are for the uh, new streetlight developments uh, and the appropriation of the same. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item 18H1 is approval of appropriation of funds from the general fund restricted fund balance, uh, county clerk's record archive for county clerk record archive in the amount of $178,400. Approval. Second. Now, these were restricted funds. These are restricted funds, yes, Judge Fletcher. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item 18H2, the pool of certification of revenues as certified by the county auditor uh, for revenues received from interest earnings and approval of 2019 appropriation and interfund transfers to fund various debt service funds. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. And item uh, 18H3 uh, is approval to deobligate the regional solid waste grant, uh, which grants funds were reallocated to, uh, to a different program. These are going to be now used for the road to recycling. So moved. Second. Opposed in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Justin. Thank you very much, sir. Marty, your notes. <laughs> okay, so we'll <laughs> okay what, what I distributed is the latest responses and observations that were sent. Uh, what, the one you see in front of you is from Precinct 4. I didn't receive anything else. I think Judge is going to make some comments this morning according to Ms. Hilda. Um, we, had, we did respond uh, as to the observations. I don't know, Commissioner Ellie, if uh, those responses uh, address what you, were, yes. what you were asking about. So I don't know any other sure. comments. Sure. Well, let me start. I just want to make sure that we're, com that we're communicating well and that, that, that we're interpreting what the commission wants to do. And that it's interpreted to the document, yes. And, and that it's properly, okay. So is it clear that the county will not pay commissions, which is, which is one, one of the options? 
Well, I think the way it, 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 yeah. the way it's the way we have it here, there's option for the carriers to submit a direct proposal, which would eliminate, or they can they can do both, or they can submit. It's going to be up to the county to decide. Okay, which way and, they go. and that's clear in the proposal. Yeah, I, okay. I believe so. Yes. All right. Then the second one is it clear to the carriers respondent that they may bid with or without an agent? Yes. Yes. Okay. Judge, if I may interrupt just for a second, just for the record, we're on item 19A. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's correct. I thought we were talking about the, the uh, well, I believe you're talking about 19A4. It's 19A4. Yes. yes. We just have I just didn't make that announcement. We, I okay. skipped directly to it. Oh, okay. I apologize. I, since it's got quite a bit of, of uh, discussion, it's best we get it out of the way. Okay, say again, 19 what? A4. A4. Page 7 of my. Yeah. Top. yeah. We skipped 1, 2, and 3. Mm -hmm. yeah. But isn't that what I'm discussing? Right, but yes, the sir. point was we skipped 19A1. We, I didn't two, three. announce we were going straight oh, there. Yeah, okay. Right. Any other? Yes, then the other item is, is uh, the RFP indicates the company may bid with one or two agents. Is that okay? That, say, that's the cap you set. I would say three agents. Three? You want that changed to three? Yes. So that okay. we can pick of the three agents. So the county's going to pick the agent, not the carrier. Absolutely, that's what was discussed at the at the meeting. Yeah. Okay, all right. But we have enough people up here to, to change that. But my understanding was there was going to be at least three agents, and that we would decide who the agent is, not the okay. not we the will, carrier. We will uh, we will uh, address that then. So up to three agents. Yeah. Okay. No, three agents or more, not up to three, because then. That sounds like no more than three, so they can give you one. We need three. Three agents. Right. Okay. So it would be at least three agents, right? There you go. Okay. Three agents or more. At least okay. three agents. At least. Okay, we'll make that change. Okay, and then is it clear, because I want to make sure that it's clear that the carrier must provide knowledgeable enrollers, even if we don't have an agent. Is, is, is that? I believe that change was made, uh, Commissioner, and if not, I mean, Judge. And if not, I will clarify that before okay. it goes out. That's it. The enrollers be clear. will be the obligation of the carrier, is what you're okay. saying. I'm fine. Okay. Then the next one is is it clear how and when the pharmacy rebates are addressed? We have asked them to include that option of telling us if the rebates are being applied or we're asking that they be applied. Let's put it that way. Okay, so, so you're telling me it's clear? Yes. Okay. I believe it is. And I have a, go ahead. No, no, no. I, I, I went on the point before. Yeah. The, they, they, the, the carrier should be uh, submitting what the, the expected rebate is and then that will be presented to court uh, and then to see whether the court wants to take the rebates uh, as a, as a discount to, to the TPA fees, or we want to take the actual rebates afterwards and take the, the full rebate, or do a combination thereof. But, but all the carriers are supposed to submit to us what rebates uh, they feel are going to be able to, to provide to the county. And then it's up to the and court to decide yes. how, how uh, they wish to apply it. And, and anybody jump in here? <laughs> I'm just I want to go back to okay, go ahead. the item that we talked about where, where the insurance companies would do the enrolling. Um, if, are they going to pass that expense to us? Because that's what they're doing right now with the agent of record. Yes. Correct. Yes. And, and right now, I just want to make sure everybody's clear on that. Yeah. That if, by just telling them to do it, doesn't mean it's going to be for free. Now, yeah. will that be? Oh no, there's a cap on how much, right? Well, the, the, cap oh, is for, the cap is for, for the, the agents, agents again. If the agents right do now, it. Uh, the agents are the ones that provide the enrollers, not not or the carrier. And basically that. The agent fee, the eighty thousand uh, dollar of agent fee, is supposed to be used for that, for them to provide us the enrollers. So if we're making the carrier responsible for it, then really the agents won't have any other 
obligation to us other than right. So you so you get rid of the agents. We get rid, but the cost. Should, what, yeah, are they going to so pass the cost to us? One, then I'm, I'm assuming that if, if we have no agents, then the carrier becomes responsible. For well, the but we need them yes. to disclose that. I mean, yeah, that's, right. that, that's the whole no, point. We want yeah, it okay. disclosed, yeah. We'll, we'll no, sure that's that's the that whole to, point. We we'll want them that. to bid and disclose it. Yeah, we'll make okay. sure to add that to I've just written board. disclose if not clear. Yeah. Okay. okay, the next one is the evaluation process clear to those responding uh, to the RFP. What is that here? Okay, the evaluation no, process. Sure. Okay, so, so, so the points are, will an insurance committee be assigned? What does you that say? You are going to... To, be up to, the court to, to designate decide. an insurance committee to hear the presentations and the Q&A. Okay, and that's clear in, in, in the I post. believe it is because we were discussing yeah. yesterday what, what I want to report to you. It will be the consultant's job to evaluate them, to score them. The committee can certainly give their opinions to, the, to Mr. Looney. Unless you want it, because we saw the, the replay, and it was they participate, and one of you can actually sit in because we're going to post it, but Mr. Looney's okay. obligation and his liability right. but, would but not the be. But the question is very simple, okay? Will an insurance committee be assigned? Yes, sir. Okay. It's in there. Then the second, the second question to that is who will assign and appoint the insurance committee? Support. And, okay. it is, it's and that is And that is clear. Yes, sir. How many members will be assigned to the insurance committee? That's not clear. We, did, we didn't discuss that during the, the workshop last, last week, uh, but it will be whatever number of Well, let's decide members. now because, I mean. So there's yeah. us, five of us, and then you, Sergio? We mentioned myself and Ms. Flora. Usually I, I have three or four of my staff sitting in those rooms. And purchasing oversees the whole thing. Correct. I mean, we don't participate, right. but we do make sure it is facilitated. Well, at, uh, five plus four or five plus six to keep it in six. I, I think we need to have some end users in there. Six, okay. Some some people, you know, the actual employees from some of these departments um, have well, some, you know, some representation in there. Well, that, that'll be up to the court if they, if, okay. if you want to add some other departments. That, that yeah. See, that's why right now we don't put a number. So, we're, so, so you're going to be. So we, the commissioner's court will assign five people, which will be. The, the five of us plus six more that, that we'll decide later. Is that okay. fair? Okay. okay. So sure right now we don't have a number, so that's covered. In other words, we say right now Commissioner's Court will assign the committee. committee. So that we don't okay. have okay. it down okay. to a number. Okay. okay. We, need room, we need room for Dyreen because she's, she's got a lot of knowledge. Yeah. Okay. Then will the insurance committee members be allowed to grade? This is a question I want you all to consider. Right now, your consultant bears the liability of the final evaluation. I believe that if we allow them to, if this is just my thought, if we allow them to score, we have, we, we're, we're shifting liability to the county. And, and what in, liability is that? In the event of a challenge from a, from a uh, one of the company, carrier. One of the competing companies challenges the award to a different company. Right now, it's all Mr. Looney our Alamo insurance through Mr. Looney to bear that responsibility. It. So Currently it has it. Mr. Looney will be the, the one doing the, the grading. Uh, that, that's what was decided last week during the court. We talked about including participants, but that we would have Mr. Looney be the one that grades based on the participants' input as well. But that's, they, if we they, they that's, that's what we said. If, if we need to change it, then, then we need to make that change. Right now it has it. Mr. Looney would be doing the grading. I would hope that there's not independent grading because I don't think we have the expertise to, to no. do an independent grade. And, and my concern is a challenge, and there he bears the sole responsibility. If anybody's going to go after anybody, it would have to be your consultant. Okay, so what's the pleasure of the commissioner's court with regards to? That we, that our, that the committee makes it, its recommendations and that Looney in this case makes the changes uh, based on the communication from the committee. But he, in other words, he's listening to them and he's scoring as he, right. as if, the if, expert. Yes, if they coincide with his uh, evaluation, we want to keep that line that he okay. took the responsibility. Okay, but, but but I want to make sure that we eliminate an, a specific thing. We, we we say a consultant. Consultant, right? I mean, I, we could do that. A consultant. A consultant. Uh, is, consultant. A consultant is supposed to a specific person. A consultant. Okay. I'm fine yes. with that. Oh no, yes, yes. I was just referring because right. okay. I know that, right. that's who it is.
Okay. Is it clear that the vendors are expected to honor the network contracted rates? I believe it's, yeah. Yes, I believe yes, it was included in I'm going to make a note and we will. Okay. Sure. But they are expected. Okay, have we ensured to vendors the county is looking for a plan design that does not include paying the deductible upfront? Uh, th that would be in the plan design, not necessarily in this RFP, but we could make that notation in there. But that's based on the plan design, not right. necessarily well, the RFP. Well, wh what did the consultant say? Isn't, that's the, that's isn't that's the consultant ask, I mean, helping you do this RFQ, and what did he say yeah. about, about that? that? That's not part of the RFQ process. I mean, yeah. the, the vendors will will apply either the deductible first or, or based on what the court wants and based on the plan that's approved by court. It's a different plan. The plan would then stipulate <laughs> that the deductible, the, the question on the deductible. And basically, the, this CPA that, that we're going to be hiring, going out for the RFP for, would basically uh, perform the work based on the plan that we give to them. Which so means we can make that change. Which it addresses your concern. should be already that way. The court's concern about the deductible. Okay, I'm, I'm almost done here. Uh, that's fine, okay. Judge. Who, that's what we're here for. Okay, who should present quarterly insurance reports or reports regarding our insurance program to the court? We have uh, the agents, the staff. Uh, I think there's a different opinion as to who, who should do the reporting. Uh, is, is that recorded in the R? What we did R put in there that it would be quarterly act and present it to the court. If there's a consultant in place, then it would be the consultant along with the HR team and, and uh, benefits. Uh, okay, and that's clear. Correct. Okay. Well, the, the next one I have is where to whom should, should this report be presented would be, be presented it, to it us. It spe specifies commissioner's court. Yeah, commissioner's court. Be commissioner's court. Okay. Last question. Okay. Are we doing anything that you know we shouldn't do or will cause a future problem with these <laughs> things that we just asked you to do? Uh, not to if I knew, I don't know, I don't, not consciously. That's no, I, 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 mean, no I, I don't want you to come back tomorrow and says, you, you guys made me do this. Okay. I don't want you to come back tomorrow and says, you know, the court instructed us to do this. My if we have knowledge today, that it shouldn't be done, then today is the time that you tell us we shouldn't have done that. Not, no. not that I'm okay. uncomfortable with or no. <coughs> All right. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm done. Okay, so we're going to incorporate these, these tweaks that we needed today, and I will instruct the staff to send you those in the final version. If with your action, it is subject to the inclusion of those clarifications, everything that was discussed, so that we can start Saturday with our first ad and have the distribution date finalized as Monday to all who request it. And we want to do it electronically, and that, that there is no one waiting at our door at 10 o'clock in the morning, you know. Okay, to get and, and you know, not an abundance of precaution. I mean, you know, call, call our consultants that these were Items were discussed, recommended. Oh no, we'll include it. You know, yeah. you know, just I mean that's why he's there for to help us with those matters. Okay. Yes, sir. So do we have a uh, a motion to uh, publish it? Oh, we already have authority to publish you it. You have to publish it. Okay, then. We have. Uh, what then those are the. What we want to act on is all of these finalized uh, issues you brought up will be included in the RFP. In the RFP. In the RFP. In the RFP. Yeah. So we need action on that. Okay, I have a motion for approval. Second. Motion in favor, say aye. 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 And one opposed, motion carries. Okay, now going to item 19A1, oh. approval of amendment number three of MOU uh, mem memorandum of understanding uh, between Inaldo County and the Lower Grand Valley Development Council, Rio Grand Valley Development Council to reflect the increase in operation hours uh, with the applicable fees, and I believe it also includes an additional stop on the route. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 One opposed? Motion carried. Ms. Marty, aye. just please make sure you get with Ms. Julia with respect to the uh, additional stop. Yes. For publication or for dissemination. Correct. 
Item two is approval of change order number 29 related to elevators in connection with the construction of the new county, Fidawa County Courthouse from contracted vendor Morganti in the amount 661623 Oh, for approval. What is this, Marty? Yeah. This is because of the bump out. You're now going to have to increase the load of the existing elevators plus the ones that are going to go to this bump out. Well, this is anticipation and this part of, the of that reports later additional on that, scope yeah. of work. Yeah. But if we, we don't if we don't do this, then we're not prepped for that floor then. Right, right. Yeah. you okay. wouldn't have access. Uh, second. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carried. Item three is acceptance and approval of the final negotiated contract with AMT Auction Marketing uh, for the uh, for the RP for auctioneering related services for Hidalgo County. Move for approval. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. No one opposed. Motion carried. As I understand it, no action on item five. Going on to item B1, precinct one, requesting exemption from competitive bidding requirements for an item necessary to protect the health and safety of the residents of the county. And this is in conjunction with the local declaration and uh, the continuation of extension of that same declaration. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. One opposed. Motion carries. Item well, we're, she's making an assumption. Does anybody want to discuss? Uh, we can discuss speed before we go down. All right. Go ahead. Okay. This is acceptance and approval of the rental of up to 1030 cubic yard roll off containers on an affidavit uh, basis with the uh, purchase order protocol. This is for precinct one to do one last 30 day, if up to 30 days of cleanup of debris from the June uh, rains. Uh, I do know that uh, the EOC chief is, uh, emergency manager chief is trying to use local assets first. So that's why we may not have to rent all 10, but this would be in the event we do. Okay, this is only roll off. What's roll off. Are the trucks? The trucks. Just the bins. No, just the roll right. yeah. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Commissioner, just to be clear, it does include the the the, okay. uh, the setup and picking it up and taking it to the landfill. So it's all in the backup. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Item two is acceptance and approval of an interlocal cooperation agreement between Dow County and the City of West Co for road improvement project to a portion of mile 10 Westgate, mile 6 to FM 88, mile 5. Move for approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Everyone opposed? Motion carried. B is in accordance with section 781 of 014 of Texas Government Code requesting approval of the interlocal cooperation agreement in the desire of both uh, political subdivisions to make this project. So approved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item three is requesting approval of the interlocal agreement between Dow County and City of Donna for the donation of Schroeder Park pursuant to Texas Local Government Code 272001. Approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. For precinct three, we're exact, we are requesting, we are presenting the scoring grid attached uh, herein for the um, responses received in connection with the proposal of the emergency ambulance services for unincorporated unincorporated areas in precinct three, Alton, Palmview, and Gran Genio. If you'll, if my staff is still here, if you could read that because I don't have my monitor with me. Uh, the grid is, oh, can you all read it from your, Ms. Monica, or I'd have to go back to, to get my computer. There were two participants. It is um, Hidalgo County EMS. There's no grid EMS. on here, but I can look it up. Here it is, Commissioner. The, uh, uh, the, and you're talking about for the um, ambulance, ambulance service. service. Ambulance service, so evaluators. C1. C, okay, so for the scoring evaluation, evaluators. Evaluator one, Hidalgo County EMS. 98, Medcare, EMS, 96. Number two, uh, and I'm talking about evaluator. Uh, Hidalgo County, EMS, 87, you Medcare. You went up to the total points at the Total bottom. points, okay. The average score of five evaluators for Hidalgo County, EMS, 95.6.
and Medicare EMS 90.8. Does the court, court wish to rank them in the order of that? Those Move up rule. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item B is requesting authority for purchasing department to proceed to negotiate, uh, including to get a best and final offer with the number one ranked for firm of uh, uh, Hidalgo County EMS. So moved. Second. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Uh, requesting approval of final negotiated professional services agreement with Javier Hinojosa Engineering for the provision of on call and as needed engineering services for precinct three. Approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And Mari, just for the record, I want to stress that's a final legal review. This is precinct three. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. No. Um, B is pursuant to the previous action to approve the uh, work authorization one in the amount of $65,040 for the provision of services on Inspiration Road. So moved. Approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item C is also a pro approval of work authorization two in the amount of $9,200 for Tom uh, Gill Road and mile five and a half road project. Approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. I'm going to take precinct four, items one and two together. I will name the two providers. This is the final negotiated professional services agreement subject to final legal review for half and associates and for B to Z engineering, and that is for services of building repairs, renovations, alterations, additions, and or other related services for county owned buildings within precinct four. So moved. Second. In discussion. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item D, three, request and approval, final negotiated agreement for professional appraisal services uh, for the on call appraisal review services for Christine for it. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? No. Motion carries. Item E1 is for HIDA, acceptance and approval of the continuation of the software license agreement and support services addendum between Cardinal Tracking and the Dallas County uh, Criminal Task Force uh, for the provision of software as, sp as stated on the agenda. And this license will be from 10 one to 9 Move for approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. IT department approval of purchase of products and services through NetSync Network Solutions through the TIPS CAPS contract in the amount of $103,727.51 and requisitions already entered. Approved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 One opposed. Motion carries. Item uh, G1, this is requesting exemption from competitive bidding requirements under Texas Local Government Code uh, Professional Service 262024A4. Approved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item B is acceptance and approval of the final negotiated professional services agreement with David Max Castro, a licensed pharmacist for the provision of in pharmacist in charge and related services for the health and human services department in accordance with uh, the occupation code 562-101 and 22 Texas Administrative Code 291-92. Approved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item one is for the Sheriff's Department, H1, requesting approval of work authorization one in the amount of 8278 under the current on-call agreement with B2Z for the provision of structural assessment engineering services at the Idaho County Jail, the kitchen project. So Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item two is presentation of the sole qualified vendor, RGV Towers, LLC, submitting the lowest and best bid for the purpose of award and, and approval of the contract for RFB number 036, lease of tower space. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. One opposed? Motion carries. Item uh, I-1, Auditor's Office requesting exemption from competitive bidding requirements under Texas Local Government Code 262-024-A7 Items for which competition is precluded because of the existence 
of patents, copyrights, and processes, or monopolies. Do they have all their paperwork in order before we do this? <laughs> actually, actually, they, they are sending it with our recommended changes, so it's subject to final legal review. I, I, I had to give it that. I know. Is this too tempting? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Uh, do you have a motion? A motion and a approved. And there's a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. And B is approval of to enter into a computer processing software subscription services agreement for a vendor portal with I love to say this word, Wiedenhammer Systems Corporation with an annual support and subscriptions amount size posted on the agenda from August 1st, 2019 to, to July 31st, 2020, including uh, the authority for the auditor to sign the documents. So moved. Second. Those in favor say aye. Aye. And anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item uh, J1 is presentation sole qualified vendor, Anridge Incorporated DBA, a clean portico, for purpose of awarding bid and approval of contract for project uh, number titled, this was done on a request for sealed quotes, number 048A, lease and service of portable toilets and our showers with a commencement date of July 17th, 2019 and expiring at the end of the year, but in no event can it exceed $50,000. This is to cover us through the rest of hurricane season or any event that we may need them. So, Sam. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. That's all. Hold on. Uh, Steve, I, I missed one on the insurance proposal. Okay. Can we go back? Or sure. Not? Okay. Uh, this one actually was, was, was kind of important. Uh, we found it at the uh, request for proposals by UT uh, University System, Texas A&M, a lot of municipalities, and, mm -hmm. and, and this, would, this should go in general questionnaire number nine on the report okay kind of page one this i'm going to read it here the whole county may or may not designate any agents a record or any other such commission representative if the Dowell county elects not to designate any agent or agents of record the Dowell county will communicate and negotiate only with the principals of the applicant organization the Dowell county will not pay commissions in the event that the applicant organization chooses to name an agent of record or such agent will not be recognized by Howell County. In addition, no commission broker or finder's fees may be paid by Howell County. Then there's a question, do you understand, acknowledge, and agree to abide by this stipulation? We have a yes or a no. Does anybody have a problem with that? I can expand, but I do know that we, on this particular uh, proposal, well, on the contract with Mr. with our consultant that is very expressly prohibited of his you know getting any commission or anything of the kind from the carriers and it's very specific to that okay. but, but but we're we, giving you direction no no that's fine I, yeah. that's what I'm saying I will include it as you wish but it is addressed with a consultant for okay. sure and we don't have a broker or agent okay. record. I'll make an amended motion to include that provision that the uh, judge just Yes, and you'll forward yes. that language okay. to us. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Yes, Thank if you, you have Ms. Hilda send it. Thank please. you very much. Thank you. Judge Commissioners, we do have um, open forum. We have three participants. I will remind the audience to please respect the speaker's time at the podium. There is a three-minute time limit, and I will advise when there is one minute. Our first speaker is uh, Ms. Lourdes Garcia. Buenos días. Me venía a darle gracias al comisionado, a Joe Flores por haber apedimentado mi colonia Buena Vida. Yo soy Lourdes García y, y le estoy muy agradecido ¿verdad? Por, por lo que hizo ahí en la colonia y por todo lo que nos ha apoyado él. También venía a, a recordarle sobre el alumbrado, ¿verdad? Que mi colonia no tiene los postes enfrente, los tiene atrás. Entonces queríamos saber si ya había fondos, ¿verdad? Para que pongan los postes hacia el frente para el alumbrado de la colonia. Y nada más vine a decirles eso, que muchas gracias a todos ustedes. Gracias. Please. Please. I just wanted to come and thank uh, Commissioner Joe Flores for paving the Buena Vida Street. They recently did a, a 
beautiful job over there. Um, but they were also um, just um, wanting to know if there's going to be any funds or budgets for Colonia that have infrastructure in the back of their neighborhood because it's like a um, one of the issues that we've had that when we apply or, or put in a petition, they, they don't have the access to be able to apply for the streetlight program because they have them in the back. My name is Margarita Suchil. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for everything. God bless you, everyone. Thank you. Next presenter is Ms. Marta Sanchez. Good morning. Uh, my name is Marta Sanchez, and I'm from La Unión del Pueblo Entero. And a um, couple of points. One is that um, my compañero has to translate because this is the second time in the commission's court that there is no translation. So we just wanted to remind you that uh, we do need translation. Imagine sitting in there for uh, this long, two hours, and not able to understand anything. It's really difficult. So uh, please uh, keep tab of that. Also, we haven't had that even the, trans, uh, the agendas translated. Uh, that really helps when the translator doesn't show up. At least they can follow with the, uh, with the agenda, but none of those things are being available. So please uh, just remember that there is people who, um, who need translation and, um, and just like, uh, like have to translate to everybody, like nobody's translating from them. So please uh, keep, keep uh, on top of that. The other thing is that um, we noticed in the planning department that one of the colonias or, or new subdivision, Vista Ridge Acres Phase 4 subdivision and Precinct 1 got approved today and this, the lights are not um, lo noted there. I don't know if that is overseas or I'm sure that I hope that they have a public lights also because we do not want to go back later on and find out that they're approving uh, new subdivisions without uh, lights. Uh, and if they did, um, we just l appreciate when they post it here because otherwise we like we worry about uh, going back to colonia uh, or subdivisions that don't have public lights, and and also just uh, echoing what uh, uh, Ms. Garcia said, uh, as you work in the budget, please um, remember to allocate some funds for lights, uh, so for colonias that do not have a public infrastructure in the front, because otherwise then we delay the process. We have colonias who've been two or three years they put up the uh, the application, but they haven't been able to get the public lights because there is no budget allocated, and that's what Mr. Uh, 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 Ray Salazar always tells us, it's, like, it's up to the commissions to find the funds. Uh, I do not find funds. So please, as you're working on the budget, remember to allocate at least one colonia of each precinct um, for public lights. And I think the average is twenty to $25,000 for each colonia, depends on how many, how many lights they need. But uh, you know, at least 100000 I know that we've been asking for a lot more, but at least $100,000 will cover one colonia in each, um, in each precinct. Thank you so much. Thank you. Last presenter is Mr. Patrick Aranoni. Patrick, my apologies. I know I didn't, okay. I didn't pronounce that correctly. Aranini. Good morning, George and uh, commissioners. Um, we're just here to introduce ourselves today. My name is Patrick Aranini. And Claudia de Guayo. Good morning, judge and commissioners. We're the new liaisons for the city of Edinburgh. I wanted to just you know, introduce ourselves and say we're here, that great things happening in our city. And we want to kind of help to build and develop the relationship between the city and the county. Uh, we do have a breakfast on August the 15th. I want to invite you all to please be part of that breakfast at DHR Conference Center. And again, we look forward to improving our relationship and growing that. Um, we're here to help you guys in whatever way we can um, with the city of Edinburgh. Thank you. Thank you. We do have closed session, Judge Commissioners. Okay. <clears throat> Pursuant to uh, Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code, Section 551.071 and 551.072, we'll be adjourned into closed session to discuss several items in the agenda. I have a motion to retire to closed session. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we're back from executive session. Are there any auction?
action items to be taken. Yes, sir. Thank you, Judge. Under item 23, open session. So we're back in open session. So I'd like to refer back to item 9E2. We'll take 9E2 first. Um, <coughs> 92 is approval and consent of Hidalgo County for Atlas and Hall and Rodriguez to represent Hidalgo County in a real estate transaction where Atlas and Hall, Atlas Hall and Rodriguez is representing the other party on, un, on other unrelated matters. May I have a motion? Motion of approval. All those in favor say aye. 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 When opposed, motion carries. Item 9E2, approval of purchase and sale agreement for, of certain real property located in the original town site of Edinburgh and West Meadows, in addition to the city of Edinburgh. And let's just add to that as amended. As amended, yes. You need an action? Yes. yes. Rule. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 One opposed, motion carries. Item 23A, real estate, uh, under open session, real estate acquisition appropriation for same. Um, there's no action under that uh, particular heading. Item 23B, pending and or potential litigation, there is no action to be taken uh, under that header. Item 23C, cause number CL193350 D. Benita G. Hernandez and Petra Martinez versus County of Hidalgo, Judge Commissioners. For the record, Ms. Josephine Ramirez, Ms. Josephine Ramirez from the District Attorney Civil Division uh, will be protecting the county's interests. And uh, for the, uh, as a matter of record, if we could have a motion and second to that effect. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carried. And item. Uh, D, cause number uh, C0561-18-I, Rosa Saldivar versus Hidalgo County and Juan Arenas. Uh, Judge Commissioners, we will proceed as directed. Item 23E, civil action number 718-CB00265, Roberto Leal et al. versus Romero Hasso in his individual and official capacities as JP of Hidalgo County and Hidalgo County. Uh, we will proceed as directed. And claim of Brenda L. Belmares, Judge Commissioners, I'd like uh, settlement authority against the claim in the amount of $1,091.61, and this would it would include uh, property and property damage and bo uh, so body injury, bodily injury. So moved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 One opposed. The motion carries. Thank you, Judge. Next week we are having a workshop. For our 2020 budget process at 9:30 p.m. No, no, no. I, I can't be in the 9:30. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, that's right. It, it's it, that. That would be the. It's. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, 1:30 p.m. 1:30. I, I I said 9:30. That's what. 1:30. 1:30. 1:30 p.m. Uh, and uh, judge commissioners, uh, I will work with the auditor's office, but I will uh, include a consent agenda so we can uh, pay some bill to our vendors. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Everyone have a good lunch. Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. No, Edward.